Hey guys, my Rachel Tiffany here. Um, I have recently become addicted to the Mixed Chicks Chat podcast. Um, I was first told about this probably like right when they started it, about a year and a little over a year ago. And for whatever reason, I did not listen. I subscribed, you know, it's like on my iTunes, and I had all these podcasts, and never listened. Well, I started listening. I hope everyone listens to it, but especially for those um, biracial watchers of the Mulatto Diaries, um, to hear the two of them, Fanchon Cox and Heidi DeRoe, talk about these experiences and they have guests on and there's a different topic for every podcast and it's just been amazing to hear them say some of the exact same things that have come out of my mouth and it's just great it's like validating to know that though there are so many variables to this biracial experience so many like that's what astounds me sometimes is that there's a lot of common ground and there's a lot of stuff that for everyone will have been completely different and yet it's like some of the same words have come out of our mouths and so um, man it's just so good so I hope that you guys will um, take a look at that mixedchickschat.com is their website and there's a blog and there's all kinds of in fantastic information over there these ladies are brilliant and um, I I don't know. I mean, I don't feel so alone in this experience anymore, certainly after doing Mulatto Diaries for six months, but then to, to suddenly start listening to these guys, girls, chicks, fantastic. Um, and so that brings me to sort of what I'm going to talk about today. Um, I have, each of those podcasts is between like 20 seven and 35 minutes long, the ones that I've heard. I'm kind of listening to some from the beginning and some of the more recent ones, and there's a lot to catch up on there. But um, it came out in one of the more recent podcasts that Heidi DeRoe was one of the subjects in uh, the first book I read when I <laughs> realized that I was biracial and that maybe I should look into what that might mean instead of... Um, only focusing on African-American history or something like that. So anyway, this book, Black, White, Other, by Lisa Funderberg. It's so freaking good. And it's a perfect place to start if you're just starting to read things like this because it's interviews with biracial people of all ages, males, females, just about their experience. I think it was like written in 1992. So... It was probably one of the first of its kind, and it's just so good. So good. So anyway, they say, oh, Heidi was in this, one of the subjects in the book, and I was like, what? No way. So I go to my book, and there she is, page 351 in this copy, and you can, like, barely turn through these pages and not see me have high lighted some sentence that someone said that I was like oh my god and I can just see myself reading this book and like the energy going through me because these are thoughts I'd had but never been able to articulate even probably that clearly in my own head if that makes any sense but um what Heidi said in here and I you know this was 1992 and I think um one of the first things that in Lisa's introduction, she includes the fact that Heidi's aware that how she felt on this day was different than how she felt 10 days before the interview, 10 years before it, and may have no bearing on how she feels 10 years later. And here we are, what, like, 92, 16 years later. Whew. Anyway, but I did, I think that these quotes um, were great, so for whatever reason, I'm going to read them. She says that being biracial makes you special in a way and people like special sometimes, and they like different, and then you're treated better. Okay? That's true. And also, this is kind of my answer. Like, people have messaged me and asked, do I think that biracial people are better looking than other people? Um, and I think that's beauty's in the eye of the beholder, so I don't know. But I also think that there's something different about the way we look, maybe, and that you're seeing, like, a 
these two things that you're not used to seeing together. I don't know. I think it's more interesting and you might look longer. And I think it would be easy to translate that into saying, oh, they're so pretty. I don't know. Um, but on the other hand, Heidi says, that's what makes it so terrible because no one else is like you and you're so alone in this. Except we're not. Because um, we're talking about it now. And so we're not alone. Um, it's really hard that this specialness, by virtue of being biracial, is celebrated sometimes, and the other times it isolates you. And makes you realize how alone you are in your being, and your very identity. She says, there's just no way I can say I am this one thing, and these, I, excuse me, I am this one thing, and these people are seeing me as this other thing, and not feel turmoil. Exactly. And that's why it's so important. That's why I say I want to promote biracial visibility so that perhaps there's not always or people are seeing me as this one thing, this other thing than what I see myself as. Because hopefully by talking about this, we're giving people an idea of what this thing that we see that we are is. Um, so I highly, highly, highly recommend this book. Highly, highly, highly. Um, and the podcast that I was listening to was also most excellent, as they all are, because Lisa Funderburg um, was the guest. And she's written a new book. It's called Pig Candy, and I have not read it, but I sincerely intend to, which means I'm going to. Um... But she said something, Lisa Funderburg on the podcast said something, and I hope that it's not like bad of me to take their podcast and then use quotes from it. But thank God for editing. Okay, so Lisa says, Blackness, whether whole or part, is so laden with value judgments, pro and con, that any stance you take in saying something about having some or all of that identity is then immediately appropriated by the listener into their value system. And as I deal with uh, comments, messages, video responses, whatever, that, um, that frustrate me for whatever reason, they don't even have to be mean for me to get frustrated, uh, I have to remind myself that where I am in my process and my human and spiritual journey, maybe, not maybe, uh, we can pretty much assume that it's going to be different from anyone else's. Uh, so the way they receive my, infor my information, whatever, what, the way they receive what I'm saying is processed through their value system, as Lisa Funderberg so eloquently put it. I couldn't have said it as well. But it, it may not really be relevant to me and my journey and my experience, so I don't need to take that to heart, and I don't need to be frustrated. That's just me and my ego wasting my time and my energy. So, Big Chicks Chat, thank you guys um, for everything. I can't wait to hear the rest. Fanchon, I didn't mean to, like, not talk about you. Um, because I think you're just as fantastic, so um, maybe another time.